What's up, guys? I'm EJ. I'm joined by Kendall again. And today we're going to be talking about the top small forwards in this upcoming NBA draft. Um, Kendall, I think the bigger you get, the depth in this draft drops. But there's certainly some talented players when you think about uh, the three men. Some guys I will give you some value at the two or even the one in some instances. Some guys will give you value at the four. So a lot of versatility when you think of a position like this. I'm very curious to see where you got you had where you had these guys ranked. Uh, interesting. You know, when you said uh, guys who will give you value at the one, I wonder who that is. But you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that. But yeah, no, uh, very interesting crop. I think the sm- the the small forward position is, you know, naturally because it's in the middle going to be the most versatile position. You know, you can have a guy that, you know, you guys that you view as as fours, guys you view as twos, um, and in some instances, guys who can guard one through five. So, um, yeah, very interesting position. Um, I'll start it out this time, EJ. Yep. Uh, at five, um, I'm gonna start with a guy that they could play some one, and that's Josh Giddy, uh, the uh, you know, 18 year old from Australia. Um, he's a very interesting prospect. I think a lot of people view him as a point guard. Um, you know, I feel like he can play. Again, he can moonlight at at the one at times. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but. I think long term, I think he he best play. I think he best fits the three spot given his size, um, his you know overall his lack of athleticism. I think hurts him as a point guard. But at the three, is not as much of an issue because of his size, um, because you know being a slower player at the small forward spot doesn't doesn't hurt you as much. Um, he's gonna have to work on his on his jump shot if he's going to uh, maximize his value at the three. Um, because his off-ball value right now isn't super high because he's not the greatest shooter. Um, but if and when that improves, and I expect that to improve, uh, even the little bit that we've seen of him pre-draft, his shot already looks better. Um, I think he's a guy that can play early on in his NBA career in his NBA career because he provides so much in terms of his ability to see the floor and make plays. Um, you know, I, met, I can count him to Joe Ingles, uh, you know, uh, in, our, in our comparisons video about Joe, uh, Josh Gideon. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's similar with, again, with the playmaking ability, the, I think the shooting upside, um, but with the lack of athleticism, but I think he'll, he could play a very similar role and be very effective. Uh, number four is a guy I, I, I talked about in our, uh, sleepers video, uh, Trey Murphy, uh, a kid out of uh, Virginia who a little bit older, uh, 21, um, but can really, really has a lot of tools that are, that you want out of a, uh, modern NBA uh, three man. Um, he can play multiple positions. He can defend at a high level. He's arguably the best catch and shoot shooter in this draft. Um, and again, the length uh, is allows him to to guard multiple positions and guard multiple positions at a high level. And also has some some potential to have some shake and some ability off the bounce as well. Although I don't think we'll see that early in his NBA career. I think as he continues to develop, um, those things may come. And if they do, I mean, you're talking about a guy that has, I think, lottery value. So um, Trey Murphy's a guy I'm, I'm, I'm really high on. I think he's being uh, particularly undervalued in this draft. Um, at number three, I'm going with uh, Corey Kispert, a dog who is really, you know, he seems like kind of a surefire. You know, I don't know how Corey Kispert completely busts. Um, I don't know if he'll ever be a superstar. I know he won't. I mean, I won't say I know he won't be a superstar, but I don't know if he'll ever be a superstar. He, you know, he's an older prospect. Um, doesn't do much off the balance, particularly in isolation. He can attack closeouts fairly well, but um, not going to uh, you know, wow you with anything off the dribble. Uh, but his the versatility and his shot making ability is is by far the the best in this draft. He. I mean, besides maybe, again, not going to do anything off the dribble, but um, his ability to shoot off movement is one of the one of the best I've ever seen from a prospect. All running all screens, um, all different types of screens, pin downs, um, all sorts of actions. Um, he's It doesn't phase him the range, uh, you know, off dribble handoffs. He's, he's a, just a tremendous shooter, and that, that can't be uh, overstated in today's NBA where the shooting is, is, is so important. Um, defensively, uh, you know, I'm not, 
I'm a little I'm not concerned because I think he's he's a he's a you know he's, he'll figure it out, but I don't think he'll ever be a, a stopper. You know, obviously the Joe Harris comps are, have been thrown out there a million times. I see a little bit of Doug McDermott as well. Um, you know, not Doug McDermott at Creighton. Doug, they're different players, but the, the way Doug McDermott plays in the NBA right now is I think where we'll see a lot of Corey Kispert. Um, at number two, I've got a guy who I think a lot of a lot of people have probably a little bit lower. Uh, and that's Zaire Williams, uh, the freshman out of Stanford, who, you know, had a rough, rough freshman season. You know, can't, you know, can't ignore it. Um, you know, he started off the season great in Maui. Um, and then pretty much after that, really kind of fell off a cliff. But um, he's a guy with a tremendous high school pedigree. Uh, was seen as a potential number one or two or three pick in this draft. Uh, and what obviously we knew to be a, an excellent high school class and ultimately and ultimately a great freshman class. Um, he was seen right up there as a top potential top five, six guy in this draft and, you know, didn't have the best freshman season. But I'm leaning on, again, a lot of his high school stuff, um, you know, the potential uh, with the, the size, the length, the handle, um, the shot creation ability, the athleticism. It's, I mean, I hate to throw out the Cam Reddish thing, but it's very similar to Cam Reddish. And you, obviously, I loved Cam Reddish, and you know, we're still kind of, te- you know, to be determined with <laughs> with Cam Reddish. But um, you know, it's a little bit in that Paul George, or as they like to call Cam Reddish, small George, you know, kind of thing with the way he plays. So, you know, I, I definitely am high on Zaire Williams. And when it comes to his bad freshman season, I give him a lot of rope given the the pandemic and the way. Their team was affected. Uh, Stanford not being able to even play home games. Uh, they, you know, like they had it worse than a lot of teams did in terms of the restrictions and what they were able to do. So, I mean, look, he didn't play well, and you, you know, you have to take everything for you know, into context. But uh, there is some other stuff in there as well. Um, and at number one, I've got uh, Jonathan Kuminga, who, you know, has been a little bit of an up and down. Uh, player in this draft process. I think most people are, I don't say most people, but a lot of people have come out and, you know, maybe been a little downer or a little lower on, on Jonathan Kuminga. I, I think I'm a little on the high side in terms of uh, where I view him. I think he is in the, uh, I think he is amongst the top players in this draft with a Jalen Green, with an Evan Mobley, with a Jalen Suggs. Um, I think what he gives you defensively, um, is going to be impressive uh, from day one. He's a little bit raw, but I think he's a guy who can play from day one and contribute. Uh, the real question, I think, is going to be his shooting ability, his catch and shoot. What kind of value is he going to give you early on? And is can he give you enough uh, as a slasher um, and as a, as a scorer in isolation and in post-ups to make up for the fact that he's not going to be a great catch and shoot sh- shooter? Uh, you imagine, but... Uh, the ability in transition. I mean, I just think, you know, uh, I mean, I compared him to Rudy Gay. You know, there's a lot of Jalen Brown you know, and what he does as well. But Jalen Brown, similar to Jalen Brown at Cal, um, a lot different than Jalen Brown now. But I actually think he has a scoring instinct that is being severely underrated, I think. Uh, and a scoring ability in general, I think, is being severely underrated. Um, he's a guy that I think could very, could very easily average 20 three, 24 points a game at some point in his career. So that's my top five. Well, there you go. I mean, look, uh, interesting top five. We'll see uh, where there is overlap and where there uh, might not be overlap. So this would be uh, a fun conversation here. So starting off at number five, I have Zaire Williams, uh, 6A small forward out of Stanford. So, you know, you had him a lot higher than I did. Uh, I'll be honest, I think that we're – Sounds like we're both kind of now on the high side on 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 Williams, who is is kind of falling though. It, it's it, it's TBD, man, because all it takes is one team, and I and I, I tend to think that one team will take the home run swing on him, because uh, there's evidence to suggest that there's a guy who could be a big time scorer in the league, um, given his physical profile, given his ability to uh, to to shoot off the bounce. He shot. 33% on off-dribble jump shots with high volume. That's a pretty good number for a 19-year-old kid who didn't get a who in the pandemic didn't get to they didn't get to work out at the Stanford facility. Like it was some like of all the the, the, the college programs. I don't want to make excuses for the for the kid, but they had maybe seen some of these most restrictive uh, uh, 
you know, uh, parameters there at Stanford that didn't help a guy who was coming from playing high school basketball then going to play college. So I, I'm giving him some break with that. Now, he look, like you said, he didn't play well. Um, he didn't necessarily shoot the ball well. I think there were times where it felt like uh, the shot selection was, was poor. Yeah, the degree, um, degree of difficulty on the shots were, were, were really tough. Yeah, and for a guy who's, who's bouncy in space, he's not as athletic uh playing off one foot or in traffic and i think we saw that oftentimes with him being kind of unreliable finishing around the basket he also needs to improve as a as an off-ball player his catch and shoot numbers weren't great so i i get i get a lot of the the concern with him but um i just see the skills the skill set the skill set the foundation of the skill set is crazy for a guy who's six foot eight with his um instincts so i feel like this guy if you could make him, you could help him put it together. You could be looking at a really good player. Now it's gonna take work. You know, it's not gonna be easy. So that's why I, I wouldn't say it's a slam dunk, and that's why I won't have him higher than five. But I think he cracked my top five on that on that potential there. Number four, I have Josh Giddy, uh, the small forward uh, slash shooting guard slash point guard, wherever you position you want to play him out of Australia. I've mentioned before he reminds me a lot of Gravis Vasquez. Um, he's actually grown now. He's about six eight, I think. I, I saw last last measurement I saw. And the guy's an excellent passer. Um, he's a, an advanced player in pick and roll. And um, he's the kind of guy that, yeah, he may be playing the three, but he can facilitate your offense. I think he fits very – he could fit very well in a team where you may have a guard who's a little bit smaller but it excels off the ball. I know people run to Utah, but that's kind of the, the, the one team you obviously think about and say, man, if he was on this team, he Portland. would uh, fit right in. Portland, definitely another team where, you know, if Dame Little can get some time off the ball – you can let this kid run the show. Um, you'll be in pretty good shape, and, and, and you'll be able to, to spell some of these guys who have these super high usage rates. Um, now, there, there was some concerns about when he even he uh, played against longer athletic wings. Sometimes he had some trouble. And then, obviously, the shooting numbers are, are not ideal. When I watch the film, it seems like he's much more fluid when he's taking pull-up jump shots, and he's actually pretty decent in those areas. Um, but uh, or even pulling up from threes, even he was a little better. But when when it became him trying to hit spot up jump shots, he's uh, not a reliable three point shooter from that regard. So that's where the the value for him dips. Um, so it, it's we'll have to see with him. I think a lot of it comes down to can he make jump shots. I, I really think that's it. If he if he can if he can make the, keep the defense honest and keep people honest from going under on screens at an alarm at just every single time, and he could hit some of those shots then he becomes a very dangerous player and a guy who maybe could be higher on this list. But that's probably the, the main thing that keeps him out of being uh, ranked higher here. Number three, I put Corey Kispert from Gonzaga. Um, the guy is just a, a dead-eye shooter. You know, in this in this NBA, this is what these teams need. They're looking for guys who can come in and hit open shots. The game is all about creating space and allowing the, you know, the guys who can get into the paint, you know, as much space as possible. And, you know, drafting a guy like Corey Kispert with his proficiency – um, as a rookie, is is ideal, and a lot of teams are going to be looking for that. I mean, the the advanced statistics are just literally insane for Corey Kisper. You're talking about overall offense, 99 percentile <laughs> um, as a whole. When it came yeah. to uh, off the ball or spot up situations, he's in 95 percentile. Off screens, he was um, 69 percentile, which is very good. Uh, in transition, he's in 97 percentile. Uh, cutting off the ball, he's he's 90 three percentile and like you said maybe never gonna be you know this great superstar or all-star player i you know we never know he could be because he's i i if someone tried to convince me he could be a kyle corver type of all-star i could hear that argument for sure but because kyle corver was an all-star but <laughs> um but even if he's not that level i mean he's still a guy who has just a, an obvious functional skill in the nba that teams are looking for that or is valued now more so than it's ever been so we got have a guy with a skill set his experience as well this guy is a winner he's won a lot obviously never won a national championship but his teams have gone deep in the tournament they've won a million games over there at gonzaga and he's been a big part of that and he's played various different roles on those teams i've seen him go from being the fifth guy on the starting lineup johnny hustle uh and and to be the hustle guy to being the leading <laughs> scorer i've seen him you know this year uh, you know, even though he was the second leading scorer, I seen in some ways kind of feel like he take a back he took a back seat a little bit when you know for for Timmy and Suggs in some instances. So it's like, I, I, you know, but he was still the most dangerous guy on the court every time he was out. There. Right, 
because because he's one of those guys where he when he gets it going, he may never stop. <laughs> like, like you yeah, know, it's, it's be not a nine it's not run a, in a matter of thirty seconds. Right? Yeah, he's a walking nine zero run. Is that he's that dangerous of a shooter? Um, one of those guys we get as soon as he crosses half court, you're gonna have to kind of keep an eye out. So, uh, Kispert, solid player, maybe not a all star, but very confident that he'll at least be a solid player that can contribute to the team. So he comes in number three for me. Number two, a uh, guy who did not make your list, who's second here. So I'm sure this will be a contention once we finish uh, the ranking here. Scotty Barnes came in number two uh, oh. fairly easily, and um, he was in discuss- He was in discussion for me for number one. So uh, extremely long-armed, gangly athlete. Uh, he lacks speed, but somehow he's, he, he's a great athlete in terms of, uh, of uh, vertical leaping. On the ball defense is special, uh, considering the guy could literally guard at least one through four, and he could probably guard some small ball five men too. Um, excellent at, at funneling smaller guards into help defense, using those long arms uh, to, to be vertical. Um, closes out great on shooters. I don't know how many times I watched him on tape just like block three point shots from guys who thought they had plenty of time. Uh, he's the kind of defensive player when you talk about defenses in the NBA. Everybody wants to switch everything because it's just the easiest way to guard people considering how good these guards are in pick and roll because they'll dice you up if you try to do anything else. So if you could just switch on guys, that's the best option if if you have the players to do that. Barnes is, like to me, just like the, the golden goose when it comes to guys that you're looking for, for switchable plays. He's probably the most switchable defender in this NBA draft. The guy also on the offensive end also can give you minutes at the point guard position. Um, the guy played point guard at Florida State, never did it before, and did a really good job. I mean, he was he was not like, oh, he was a point guard, but he really didn't do great. I mean, he he came off the bench and really ran their offense pretty well. Um, he's a really good passer. He's he's proficient in pick and roll offense. Um, I love that he keeps his head up when he's dribbling, so it allows him to see the floor well. I, to me, the only thing he's missing is uh, kind of like a refined scoring game. And I think it's a big hole, and that's why some people won't be that high on him. Uh, you know, the isolate, one-on-one isolation isn't necessarily all that inspired. The shot form needs a ton of work. He is, it's a, it, he, he's very stiff and mechanical. Um, he doesn't really have a three-point shot. He doesn't really have a mid-range game or in-between game. Um, and he doesn't seem to really have a, a He doesn't really seem to have a plan B if bullying the guy to the basket doesn't work. So I get all that, but. The, the intangibles are so high. I mean, to me, if I'm thinking intangibles, I think maybe only Suggs and Cunningham I'm putting ahead of him. Uh, I, I just think the world of this kid, he just seems like the kind of guy that's going to make it work in the NBA. And I would just bet that he's going to find a way to hit some jump shots. I know it, don't look good. it doesn't look good right now, but, but I'm, I'm going to say that he finds a way to get it done in that side of the ball. Again, the defense is, a, is phenomenal. So he comes in here at number two. Number one, um, again, he barely held on to the spot because I really almost put Scotty Barnes here, but I did keep Kaminga here. Um, the the physical profile for elite for a wing player is elite for him. You know, six 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 seven, two hundred and ten pounds, really strong. Um, he's a great at attacking defenders on drives. Doesn't shy away from contact. He's excellent, excellent at getting at the free throw line. I mean, I think it's probably him and Sharif Cooper you guys look at like it's ridiculous how good these guys are at their age to get to the free throw line but he's really good at getting the free throw line um he's pretty good off the dribble when it comes to decent uh mid-range shooting you know three-point shooting again continues to be a a little bit of a concern for him which is why to me I almost put Barnes there because neither guy really is 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 uh, a consistent three-point shooter but uh Kaminga just the, the physical profile the athleticism and as you mentioned, I think he has scoring instincts that suggest that once his skill set, once his not even skill set, once his skills match up to the skill set and the scoring instincts, there's a chance you're looking at a multiple time All Star. So I, I couldn't ignore that. Um, they may not, and if they don't, then he's kind of, he's probably a starter, but he might not be ever be a star player. But uh, but but you know the kid's been uh, a top player for years in high school went up uh the best for a long time yes exactly (laughs) reclassified to get into this class so sometimes it doesn't mean that oh just because you were all world when you were 15 means that you're gonna be great but at the same time when when guys are that good that young maybe they're not lebron james but they 
a lot of times I feel like they tend to at least find their way through the NBA. He's been that he's been the best in his class, one of the best in his class since a very early age. I don't think that's changed here. So he comes at number one for the small forwards for me. So what's interesting is neither one of us had Franz Wagner on our list. Um, mm-hmm. I view I viewed Franz as a as a four. Interesting. I thought he was going to be your number two. Um, you Franz views, Franz is views. is he is a small four for me. But wow. He came in, he came in at seven. Okay. Spicy. Um, he came in at seven. Wow. Yeah, Trey Who's Murphy six? was six. Trey Murphy was six. Okay, interesting. Interesting. So Franz, man, and again, this is a tough. I would say to me, in terms of again, people viewing these rankings for me, I would say if you're in my top seven in this group, like I told you before in the in the shooting guard video, I felt like to me if you were in the top, definitely in the top ten, you're like I think you're a really good player. Um, I say small four, I think it's seven deep. Like to me, like even if you're seven, I wouldn't like think that I think that Franz Wagner stinks. I, I don't think that at all. I think look, Franz Wagner, um, if, if if there really truly was a a uh, a, a sequel to Andre Karolinko. This is probably it. Um, I guess to me, the question mark I have with Franz is, what is he offensively? Because I'm not 100% convinced he's a knockdown shooter, and I'm not convinced he's an isolation scorer. So, I mean, is he just a guy that comes in and plays defense? I mean, his defense is really good, and I do believe in it. But to me, that's a very, that's a, that's a, a, I don't want to say a marginal player, but that's somebody who has a specific role, and I'm not asking them to do much more beyond that. I think the people who probably like him more will think that he's more of an offensive threat than I see him. I think, I don't see, and I, don't, I mean, I don't know, you could correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, because you, and you didn't have him in the list either. I mean, do you see an offensive trait to you that reads definitely NBA level? I don't see one. I see um, ones that are decent. I think that, they're all that are passable. That's what's right. So I mean, I view him as a four, but as but for what he, but for what he does, like to me, he reminds me a lot of Gordon Hayward, um, where like I Gordon Hayward also <laughs> doesn't. I think know, Gordon I didn't... Had, didn't have a a, a a a an elite skill coming out of coming out of Butler. I think Gordon Hayward sees the floor better than Franz Wagner does. But in terms of the ability to put the ball on the on the on the deck, get to the rim, finish at the rim, shoot, catch and shoot and catch and shoot, like I I catch and shoot, yeah. I, I, you know, I think I, I I agree that there isn't there aren't like there are there isn't a ton of, a ton of elite with Franz Wagner, but um, there's not a whole lot of holes in his game as well. I don't think I, he's as dominant defensively uh, as maybe like a Karolinko, but. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna hold his own and be able to guard multiple positions. Um, that's interesting. So you seem to think of him way higher offensively than I do, and I seem to think way higher from defensively than you do. Yeah, I, I think that I think that he's legit. I think that at this position, only Barnes is comparable. Oh, and Trey Murphy. And to be honest, Murphy's offense is what led me to lead, put him ahead of Wag Wagner. I think they're right, kind of right. similar defensively, but Murphy is a great shooter. So. I think Wagner has high upside, man. Like. When you have when you don't have the holes or you when you like he's a raw player, um, I think there's framework post game. I think there's framework for again ability to be able to attack mismatches. I think he's a, again, I think he's a four. So me viewing him as a four, I think he can play the three. I think he's gonna be a lot bigger than a lot of the guys playing the three if he is playing the three. But mm-hmm. um if he's playing the four, then I think he's he's gonna be able to get by guys with his handle. You know, I think he's going to be – that's going to be his, his – his, his, he's almost like a tight end in the NFL where he, his, his elite skill is going to be his mismatch, his ability to be a mismatch at the at, at the four spot. Yeah, and I and I can definitely see that. Um, I guess to me – and, I got, you know, to me, we kind of talked about it off air, but when I think of positions, a lot of it what drives me in terms of the position is who are you guarding, and Wagner can guard two through three. Um and to me, I kind of split the difference. I said, I think he can really. I think he can or two guard through four, yeah. Or two through four. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, he can guard two through four, and to me, I kind of split the difference. I said, well, I'll, I'll make him a three, and I, I think that he can legitimately guard threes. Uh, I think he'd be a nightmare for a lot of these guys who are not used to seeing a guy six nine with his 
uh, lateral quickness and his just kind of just like natural instincts. Um, he's a good player. I just, I just, I'm not sold on him as an offensive player. That's like it's that's the that's the biggest hiccup for me. I'm not. I I thought you would have. I thought you'd have Wagner at two. Um, I thought you would have him as a three. Uh, and you did, but, right, but <laughs> when not, I didn't hear him, I thought I'd have him as a four too. Um, I have Scotty Barnes as a four as well. Interesting. Um, he, to me, the problem with him at the three, again, I, the way I look at some of these positions is also like, to me, where would I, where does the guy present the most value if I'm building a team? And I think at the three spot, I don't think he shoots it well enough for me to build my team around him playing, being my wing. Um, as opposed hey, to me, let me give you. Let me before you continue though. Let me give you a quick devil's advocate though. I'd almost argue I'd prefer that shooting at the four nowadays than I would at the three, because that's, that's fair. Because I feel like you're not putting threes in pick and pop action. So you're not. So to me, that guy's you, his only value is is either if you're running plays for him off screen. And to be honest, I think there are very few guys in the NBA that you're running screens for off screen off the ball like that. So you're either running him on off screens or yeah. he's in a catch and shoot position. I would argue I, I I could find a four who could do that and maybe give me some pick and pop potential. The the problem you're right. The problem with Scotty Barnes is that like I feel like his best spot is, you know, in w- inside the arc, you know, I, or with the ball in his hands. Like either one of the two. Like I, he's got the ball in his hands or he's playing inside the arc. Um at in the dunker spot. Like I don't know if he's a guy who's going to be in the corner, you know, unless, I mean, look, maybe he has to improve his jump shot uh, and then he, um, yeah, but I think, I, mean, I think he's, Barnes, to me, he's, Barnes I'm not copying to him to Draymond Green, but I think of the Draymond Green role for where right. I think Scotty Barnes lies. And like Draymond also, you know, even now, like not a great shooter, but now he, he's much better screener than Scotty Barnes is at this stage. Um, and that's the difference. So uh, yeah, Barnes yeah. reminds me a lot of a guy who I loved in the draft years ago and it's carved out a good NBA career in Kyle Anderson. And if you remember, I thought Kyle Anderson should have been the NBA point guard. Um, I, that's how I felt then. And I wonder what would have his career been like had someone just tried to make him a point guard. Like, I to me... Right, similar to how Ben Simmons was allowed to play point. Right, like yeah. I honestly think that Kyle Anderson... I'm not saying he's Ben Simmons in terms of, like, how good he would have been. But I think, like... I really wonder, like, I think he could have been just as good as, definitely just as good as he is as a three slash four than he is as a one um, because he's that good a passer. He's that good a ball handler. I think with Barnes, not to say that I'm saying Barnes needs to be your point guard, but I think if you're drafting him, you need to build a team that makes sense. So to me, I'm, I need to have a five, maybe a five and a four man who can shoot the ball a little bit. Um, and I need to have a two who doesn't need the ball in his hands. Because to me, Barnes has to be your secondary ball handler. That's where his value is. Because I, I think that he, right. off the dribble, I think he could kill anybody guarding him at the three. Because he's, he's just, he's got a great handle. You know, he's he's not easy to stay in front of. Um, he's a pretty strong body. I know the NBA guys are stronger, so he won't be able to bully these guys as much. But he's got to be able to, to play downhill as much as he can. So to do that, you're going to have to supply him with a lot of spacing. And I don't think that that's this is not- hard. I don't think that's that crazy. I think that you have to look at the, you know, the, the teams in the top ten and see who's most equipped to, to, to play that way. Um, but the, in this day and age, I mean, this was eight years ago. I would say maybe it's, it's a little harder. I think in this day and age, it's not that hard to find a team that can get you enough shooting to where someone like Barnes can can can, can show his value um, on an NBA squad. This was, I mean, we had pretty much we had very similar guys. We did. Um, my my had, question you, is, you who, had Zaire some Williams. of the guys. You're sorry, I'll let you ask your question. I too. Yeah. Yeah, I had William to two. Um, yeah, but I was just going to say, yeah, you had him at five. That's the big difference because, to me, I, I, I'm just leaning more on the on the upside part of it. I think right. um, if it works, if it works, the guy is going to be um, – he's going to be one of the ten best players in this draft. Um, to me, it, like, I'm not as worried about him being raw after what we saw last year from Jaden McDaniels. Jaden McDaniels was last year's Cam Reddish. He was last year's Zaire Williams. And – you know, he flashed a lot of talent. He wasn't, you know, maybe the guy who should have been a top five pick in out of high school, but he was probably a little bit underdrafted or accurately drafted um, in the middle of the first round because 
of the, a lot of the tools that he had and a lot of the talent. And I think Zaire Williams could actually play an NBA role quicker than I think people may expect. Um, but w- who are some of the guys that didn't make the list for you? I, there aren't, so, yeah, aren't so many. Trey, Trey, I, I, I felt terrible, Trey Murphy, not making this list. Um, Zaire made it on pure potential. I feel I'm, yeah. I I still I feel like if you ask me tomorrow I may put Trey Murphy there because he's one of my right. You're like if I was a GM and you had, I had to make a pick and <laughs> I, I needed a three. I, mean, I don't know if I tell you here that I'm actually taking Zaire Williams if I was trying to keep my job. Um, right. But because Trey Murphy's a late riser, he's been kind of rising and rising. Again, if you ask me next week, he may pass Williams there. But uh, right. Murphy just missed the cut. I told you Wagner Wagner was at seven. Um, I, I tell you again, I think there's a big drop off after seven for me. It's a for my huge top drop seven. Off. After all uh, the guys that we've named, I tell you what, no one they, else that I the eighth guy I put was a, the eighth guy I put with AJ Lawson, um, who impressed me during the combine. Uh, has deep range as a shooter, can play a little bit on the more on the ball than I thought he could. I was impressed with what I saw in the combine, so he rose a great deal. I mean, a lot of these guys don't have, didn't leave a lot to be desired. So like, the eighth spot was open. So he, yeah. he really rose. A up. lot of my favorite. I went favorite back and watched more film, draft. and I was actually pretty impressed. Uh, a lot yeah, of cast, my favorite sorry, small forwards in the draft didn't. A lot of my favorite small forwards in the draft didn't stay in the draft. So uh, like I love Bagley. Terrence Shannon. Yeah, okay. I love Marcus Bagley. Love Terrence Shannon. Love. I mean, I love Johnny Juzang, but I, I like Johnny Juzang. You know, and none of those guys stayed. And, you know, I even like Ochai Obaji, Obaji mm. also, not in the draft. So I, if you're talking about the position that was hurt the most by guys leaving or staying, rather, in, in school, I would say it was the three spot to me or just the wing position in general. A lot of good wings that decided to stay um, as opposed to going to the draft. I also like what I saw from Kessler Edwards uh, as a defender. Um, offensively, maybe – I, there was nothing in the combine so offenses that that worked. Even though he's a, he, the film suggests he's a better offensive player than he than he was in, during the combine, but uh, he has the potential to be a true three and D guy. Um, I think Aaron Wiggins did not have a great NBA camp. He had a really great G League camp, but uh, uh, he's someone I think to keep an eye on because he's a pretty talented offensive player. The uh, the guy the guy who made who really missed the cut for me real quick was um, two guys were were Joe Weiss camp who I viewed as two guys that you could view as twos, yeah. uh, Joe Weeskamp and then I think David Duke as well. Um, Interesting. To me, I view as a – he's a I think he's an, an initiating – he's similar to Josh Giddey almost. I think he's a guy who kind of needs to be an initiator, um, but I think he's going really underrated in this draft as well. And, I agree, but David Duke you know, is a point guard for me in my listing. So that's interesting. That you have David Duke as a point guard. Interesting. Yeah, I've met him. <laughs> Interesting. So – yeah, I mean, I, it's tough. I mean, he can play the point, no doubt. Um, to me, I don't know if he's good enough to be, you know, to be your point guard. Like, it's only like maybe he's DeLon Wright, and if he's DeLon Wright, then I guess he's yeah, your point I, guard. I, but I, like DeLon pretty, Wright, I, that's a pretty decent comparison for me. You know that that's a that's another guy who that's a guy who can almost play like some two and three. You know, right. yeah, <laughs> the definitely. way he plays. But, um, but yeah, Joe Wieskamp is a is a guy that I think also. Um, you know, wasn't on the same tier one, to me as Trey Murphy, but right below. One guy neither of us have mentioned is BJ Boston, who had a lot of, uh, who had a lot of fanfare coming into uh, college, coming out of, uh, uh, you know, Sierra Canyon, went to UK. He came in at eleven. Oh yeah. for me, that was after a couple guys dropped out. So that says that says what I guess that is. I view is. BJ as more of a two guard. Um, it's a deep two guard class, uh, but even as a three, um, he look he's a guy who can make a lot of people look stupid if he ends up being a stud because he has yeah, tools that are very 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 impressive. You know you don't you know these recruiting guys are better than people think, um, and you know they didn't people they didn't have VJ Boston in the top five uh, for nothing. You know like he he can play. But just very, very raw. I mean, I wasn't the highest on BJ Boston coming out of high school, so I wasn't as, I wasn't as, uh, you know, shocked by the, the the struggles he had at UK. But even then, I think you know people have probably jumped a little too, a little bit too far off on BJ Boston. But, um, but it's tough, you know, because he's a guy you're gonna have to take a flyer on. 
I guess like, the question would be, what's the difference between him and Romeo Langford, you know? Right. I mean, That's Romeo yeah, Langford was a little bit better in college, but also yeah. just complete project. So, One last guy I'll mention who I think I have right below Boston, but I think it's someone to keep an eye on is Isaiah Livers from Michigan. Uh, he kind of reminds me of a bigger Gary Trent. Um, he's a very a bigger good Gary Trent. Like, like, yeah, you know, Gary Trent can play the two. I don't think Livers. I was like, Gary, Gary, like Gary Trent's pretty big, too, man. I know. Yeah, I mean, look. on Gary Trent small. <laughs> Livers is a thick dude. I'm not going to, you know, yeah, yeah, not going to yeah. lie. But, uh, but, but uh, no, nah, I mean, you know, Livers is a really good shooter. Yeah. Um, and he can shoot in a lot of multitude of ways. And he can give you minutes at the four. So, uh, I like him. I, I think that he's being kind of underrated here. We'll see if he gets drafted. But uh, he would be a guy in the second round that I was looking for some shooting and some positional versatility. I think he's a, he could be a potentially really good fit for, for a lot of teams. But what do you guys think of this uh, edition of our um, our uh, positional rankings here, small forwards? I'm sure you guys got a lot of just a lot to say about our rankings. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. We'll be sure to give our thoughts as well on what you guys think about our rankings. Of course, if you like this video, make sure you give us a like. And you can subscribe to the channel for more draft content right here on New Generation Media. So make sure you hit that subscribe button for more draft coverage as we get closer and closer to the NBA draft. That'll do it for now. For Kendall, I'm BJ. Take it easy, guys. Peace.